In this video, I want to go through writing this Monte Carlo simulation program uh, for a capital budgeting problem. So I've already listed a bunch of inputs. I don't know if I have all the inputs, but I've already listed a bunch of them. And I've named them. So the first one, uh, COM for cost of machine. I've written this down, so I have it as a reference in WC. I'll let you see the names here. Pro, uh, PPU for price per unit, CPU for cost per unit, SC for fixed cost. Unit mu for expected annual unit sales, unit vol, YRS for years, WAC for WAC, uh, market mu for the uh, predicted price of the machine at the end of the project. And I don't know if any of these are uh, commands in Excel or not, so I may not be able to use them. I'll just test that as I go along. And then for volatility of the machine, I just click in the name box, market vol, hit enter, and there it is. If you don't, uh, you can pick any cell, click up in this name box, and then you can put the name to wherever you want it to be, as long as it's not a command like average or something. Uh, and if you want to change it, I've found the best way to change it is to go to the name manager, which is under formulas, name manager, and if you click on one of these, you can edit or you can delete or you can do a new one. So for new, um, you know, so for new, you just click on here, pick any cell you want, click back, and you can name it wherever you want to name it. But I don't want to do that, so I canceled. Notice these are all refers to Monty and then the cell. I have changed the name of this worksheet to Monty, and I've done that for a reason. Now, if you want to go to the uh, the integrated developers environment, which is where you do the DV, the VBA, it's in developer and visual basic. Now you can have alt F11 and go back and forth. You can toggle back and forth between like that. But I'm working on a laptop so I find it easier to go back and forth by clicking on visual basic or this little Excel icon. Now I want to insert uh, a module and insert a procedure and I'm going to name this uh, Cap Budget Monty for Capital Budgeting Monte Carlo. Uh, I could even cap budget my sim. And I'm going to keep this as a subroutine. I'm going to keep it public. Click OK. I'm going to make the viewing box here a little bit bigger. So I want some room to write. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to assign variable names. So I make up the name cost. Cost, I'm going to say, is equal to, and I don't know if cost is a command in Excel or not. I'll find out in, in just a minute. And this we haven't done in class, but you can say worksheets, um, open parenthesis, quote, Monty, because I've named the worksheet something, um, period, and the range is a cell you want to look in, so range, C-O-M, and go down and see that that works. It recognizes that. So if I want to look at different worksheets, so when I'm over here, I will look in sheet two or sheet three or Monty. I can tell it which one. And while I'm here, I'm going to name this cell dog. I'm going to get rid of that later. But right now, I want to make sure that this reading is working correctly. So I'm going to say um, range open parenthesis quote dog. So that's saying the cell. And as long as it knows to look in Monty, because I've told it to look in Monty, you don't have to tell it again. If you wanted to look in a different worksheet, you would have worksheets, in quotes, where the name of that worksheet was, dot range dog. And that's going to be equal to cost. All right, so let's see that that became a capital letter. I run this, and it seemed to work. I come back over here. I don't have anything in there, so obviously that's not going to work. Let's put in 50,000. Uh, come back here. I can run it from here if I want, and there it comes out as 50,000 in dog. Get rid of that. I can also run from right here in macros, and I can run it. So all I'm doing there is making sure that what I'm reading in is correct. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video now, and I'm going to write a bunch more statements that look just like this, but I don't want you to have to sit and watch me type. Okay, so I've gone through, um, I guess I should go back and show you this part first. I've gone through here and put in all the names. I'm reading in all of my inputs. And if I want to, I could uh, take each one of these, uh, like I can make NWC right here. I could run it 
I go over here and I see that this, and let me put this in a good format, that's equaling the NWC just like I like it is. I could test each one of those that way if I wanted to. Now, I don't remember, um, I'm trying to have this like that. I don't remember all the inputs, and that's not really important. Um, you can change all the inputs right here. That's what makes this robust. And let me get rid of that. So I have all these as inputs. I'm going to just choose to put their writing in, let's say, um, a nice blue and bold. And the depreciation, I'm going to have depreciation equal to the cost of the new machine divided by the years. And I notice when you you don't have the cell reference of B2 or B whatever, it's the actual name, and that's going to make a difference. And look, if I copy this over, it still it stays in the same one because it sticks with the name. So it, that gets rid of that relative uh, cell reference that you've had before. This is an output, so let me put that output as a uh, the red, you know, just so I have some type of color coding to know I don't put this number in as a user. I need to type all of these numbers in. Okay, so now that I have that, let's just think about what we need to do. I like to have a lot of space here. So I need to have um, a net present value. I need to have a cash flow in your zero. So let's say CF0 is equal to minus cost minus. Uh, NWC plus proceeds. So that's my initial cash flow. And I, I put CF0 right here. And I can run this. Go back over here. And there's dog. I can see my initial cash flow is minus 5,250,000 because it's this minus that plus that. Uh, notice if I change this, that doesn't change. I have to run it. So I have to come back here and run, and I run it, then it changes. Okay, so it's nice to have, see what I mean? It's nice to have that as a check, to check things slowly as I go. Okay, so now I need to have um, net present value, but I can't use MPV because MPV is a command. So MPV, um, let's call it. Uh, project. MPV of the project is equal to CF0. Uh, so that's good for the, now I'm counting this up right, I have the first year in, so now I say for uh, Y equals 1 to years minus 1. And see how that lights up blue, so it, it knows I have the right command there, and I want to Go down, space, and tab over. So now I'm doing years one to four. So I need to have a random variable. So let's call it, um, and I'm doing this not necessarily the most efficient programming way, uh, but a way. So let's call it, I think it's one that makes more sense to see, but like I said, maybe not is as efficient. So let's call this random draw. That's equal to application dot worksheet function um, dot norms inverse of rnd open close parenthesis go down and now the units I can say units is equal to uh, units or was it unit mu plus how am I Okay, I'm going to rename this. If you change something that will, it kind of gets mad at you. I want to call this, and see a random draw, I want to call this Z, because that's what I had on the board before. And you see Z in textbooks a lot for this. And this will be unit vol times Z. And I go down, and that looks to be right. So now I need to have, um, I'm going to call it cash flow, cash flow in year one. It's going to be equal to, I need to have the revenue. So the revenue is going to be uh, units times price per unit minus units times cost per unit. And I could use parentheses there. It just depends on what you want it to look like. Minus the um, fixed cost 
minus depreciation. I don't think I named that depreciation cell, so I'm going to leave that here. Go back over my depreciation cell. I did not name that, so let's call it DEPR. Hit enter. Should have that written down. And minus DEPR times 1 minus tax. I don't have a tax in there, so I'll put that back in just a minute, plus depreciation. And that is going to be my cash flow, but I need to have the present value of that cash flow. So, parentheses around all of it, divide 1 plus WAC, raise to the Y. And come down here and say next I. All right now, not next I, next Y. So what's going to happen is this is years is five. So this is going to make it five. Let me make sure I did. Years is five. And come back over here. This is going to happen four times. So Y is equal to one. It's going to take a random draw, determine the number of units. It's going to come up with the cash flow. And the next thing I need to do, I left this off, the net present value of the project is now, or shall be equal to, the net present value of the project was, plus the cash flow, CF. So it's going to go through, it's going to random draw, figure out the number of units, tell me the cash flow, the present value of the cash flow for that year. And it's going to add it to the net present value of the project. And it's going to repeat and do that in year two, year three, and year four. And let's let dog equal to NPV of the project. Now I'm going to run it, and there's going to be a mistake because I haven't named tax yet. It doesn't have any idea what tax is. So run. And it just has tax as a zero, and it doesn't show me anything. So that's one of the little problems that you run into is you may think you have everything taken care of when in fact you don't. So here I'm going to put tax rate and it's going to be we do percentage 40 percent and I want to name this tax and see that's what it has for my net present value right now and I go back over here to Visual Basic, I need to say tax is equal to range tax. Got it. And now let me run. And we'll see what that's equal to. That's giving me a number. I have no idea because I haven't checked these numbers. If that number is correct, that's something. The first time you do this, you may want to do it on a piece of paper or a spreadsheet to make sure that number is correct. Um, and let me go to the next part here. The last thing I need is I need something to happen in year five. So this is year zero. This is years one through four. Now I need to have a year five. In year five, I'm just going to take this and copy. Come down here. And... That's going to be that Z. And then I need a Z for the machine. I'm going to call it ZM for Z machine. And that's going to be equal to, I'm going to do this same thing here. I'm going to just take this, control C, and copy. So it gives me two random numbers. And the, uh, call it the market. Call it machine. Call it new machine. New machine is equal to the market mu plus market vol times zm. And when everything spreads out there, you know that that's working correctly. And so in this cash flow right here, I have all those cash flows. Plus, I have the value of new machine. Plus, I get my networking capital back. And so, now, the net present value of the project 
it's adding up. You know, this year zero, years one, two, three, four add up, and that adds up year five. I run this thing, and it gives me a new value, a new net present value. If I change these numbers, um, so let's change the cost of the machine. That looks really high. I don't remember what it was. Let's say that it was one million. Let's run it and see what we come up with. We're still down a little bit. Maybe that's uh, 250,000. Maybe this is going to be 500,000. And let's run this thing again. You see the numbers are changing. You can go through it and make sense of if this is something that looks to be correct to you. So there we go. That's, um, that's the video.